Konnichiwa, Genki Deska. Welcome to another episode of Go Mega Otaku Gamer Alpha. I'm your Mega Otaku Gamer. I am Ken Chan. And today we're looking at the Sony PlayStation, otherwise known as the PS1. Now, the PlayStation has an interesting backstory. Really interesting. Uh, probably one of the more interesting backstories that. Uh, there are in the video game industry. The PlayStation was the brainchild of Ken Kataragi, a Sony executive who had just come out of his hardware engineering division at that time and would later be dubbed the father of the PlayStation. Uh, the PlayStation made its debut at the Consumer Electronics Show in June 1991 when Sony revealed its console, a Super Famicom, with a built-in CD-ROM drive. However, the day after they announced it at CES, Nintendo announced that they would be breaking its partnership with Sony, opting to go with Philips instead, but using the same technology. There was a time when Sega had a CD unit, and it was because, of course, that uh, NEC, the Turbo Graphics, had a CD unit. People were just starting to get, these companies were just starting to get down with the whole CD thing. Nintendo decided they wanted to look into it. They weren't convinced that it was a good thing. They got in bed with Sony, sort of. Sony came off with this machine that attached to the to the Famicom, the Super Famicom, or the Super NES, and they, they would be able to make games for it. And but uh, Sony wanted to make all the profits off of the games that got made for the CD add-on, which Nintendo didn't like. I mean, who, who wants to do that? I mean, why would anybody do that? Um, so anyway. Uh, Sony and Nintendo parted ways. Nintendo decided to wait until the last minute to announce that and, and that they were going with Philips. Uh, as you know, the CDI was something that didn't even show up on a radar compared to the PlayStation in the long run. But uh, Sony decided to make the machine themselves. They, they wanted to make their own uh, console. And they were quite successful at it. The Sony PlayStation, of course, was manufactured by Sony Computer Entertainment. Um, it was part of the PlayStation product family. It was a uh, video game console from the fifth generation era. Uh, the retail availability in Japan, it was available December 3rd, 1994. In North America, September 9th, 1995. In the European Union, September 29th, 1995. And in Australia, November 15th, 1995. Um, later it became the PS1. And we'll, I'll show you the difference then in a little bit. Uh, the PS1, which was the same guts, just smaller, slimmer design, was available in Japan on July 7th, 2000. Wow, six years later. Um, uh, September 19th, 2000 in North America. And September 29th, 2000 in the European Union. It was discontinued. The PlayStation, the original design, was discontinued July 7th, 2000. And the PS1 design, the, the new slimmer, slimmed down design, was discontinued December 31st, 2004. They had worldwide, and the worldwide sales for the unit was over 100 million. They had 102.49 million units sold. And the PS1, by the way, the PlayStation, was the first console to break the 100 million mark. Uh, which is quite a feat. I mean, before that, you know, it was good to sell 50 or 60 million, you know, Super NESs or something like that, for example. Uh, the media, of course, was CD-ROM. The CPU was a uh, MIPS R3000A. I could be saying that wrong. Maybe it's MIPS. MIPS? Is that a word? Um, it ran at 33.8688 megahertz. Uh, it used, uh, for storage, it used memory card. There was no onboard memory. The input was the PlayStation controller, dual analog controller, dual shock. Best selling game was Gran Turismo. 10.85 million units shipped as of April 30th, 2008. And the successor, of course, was the PlayStation 2. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the PlayStation. We're going to look at the Japanese PlayStation as well. I'm kind of lumping this all together. Uh, the reason why is because I want you to get a good look and see, look see of what this unit used to look like and how it evolved. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, and uh, 
this is the original design of the PlayStation, even though this is a Japanese PlayStation. Um, and we know this because here on the back, it's NTSCJ right there, Japanese. Um, but this was the original design of, of the original PlayStation, even here in America. Um, and you had these originally. You did. These were on. These uh, you know, audio-video uh, cables were uh, on the original PlayStation. Okay, and they were. Uh, this is um, some manner of uh, expansion or something, I think. But this was the uh, the way that this worked originally. You had your uh, you know your video and your audio stereo out here. You also had an AV adapter. They had their own proprietary thing. Later models of this, using still using this design like this, they got rid of these. These were gone. I'm lucky enough to have one of the original PlayStation still working that has these okay um, of course here's the power uh, this is some kind of expansion port this thing is virtually impossible to get off of here though uh, bad design so we flip this over to the front and we have the memory card slots here and the controller ports and there's two Okay, and that's pretty much it. Reset button, power switch, open and close. And that's it for that design. And then, of course, the the uh, memory cards would go here. You plug in the controller here. This is the original controller. Uh, if you're used to PlayStation controllers, I'm sure, which, you know, most people are that play anything, you know, these days... You're, you notice that there's something missing on this, something very critical, and that is it doesn't have any uh, analog sticks. This is because Nintendo had not put their analog stick on a controller yet, giving Sony something to copy, because Sony, despite what they say, they've innovated nothing. I mean, can you name one thing, game-wise, you know, as far as game consoles are concerned, that Sony actually innovated? You know, uh, what, CD-ROM? No. Uh, there were people doing that before that. You know, Sega, 3DO, <laughs> you know, a bunch of others. Uh, uh, the fact that, you know, there was interchangeable games? No, that's been going on since the Odyssey. A controller with a rocker switch? No. Uh, that's, you know, Nintendo did that. Um, they put handles on this thing. Uh, that were a little bit you know, longer, like bicycle handles. That's about it. I mean, other than that, there really isn't that much innovation. And since then, Sony really has not innovated much of anything. Uh, I can't think of a single thing that they did first. Not one. If you, if you, can, if you can think of something, by all means, please let me know. But uh, there was, you know, they, 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 they're the great copiers. You know, they're, they're like Apple and uh, Microsoft and all those other companies that... <laughs> they have nobody creative working for them, so they got to make stuff. You know, they got to copy other people's stuff. But anyway, that's that's um, that's that design. Then they went on to this design here. This was what they called the PS One. Okay, Sony PS One. Yeah, you had your on-off switch, your uh, which was also a reset button. You reset it by turning it on and off. Open button here. This opens it up. There, you're in there. Memory cards. The memory cards in the controller setup is basically the same. If you go in the back here, you have AV multi out right there, and you have your power. And that is it. They made this thing very small and very, very compact. And they went with this design. Now, this design had come out still when, when, when this console design this console design was out they had these okay they you know once nintendo put one stick on theirs they said oh yuck, 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 we'll put two on ours oh, yuck, yuck, yuck. you know uh because they're they're good and non-creative like that so it's basically the same thing here's the analog selector button you know everything else is the same you got your triggers out here and your rocker switch and your you know, your triangle, circle, X, and square button, and, and you got these, and these push in, and they move in all directions. This became a standard. 
um, to be sure, versus Nintendo's controller. They haven't had a standard controller yet. But this became a standard, um, and that's because Sony copies, and then they make it look like they try to make it look like they came up with it somehow, which they did not. And that's a fact. You can check that. This is a Sony PlayStation with its own screen. And this is a PS1. And this is portable. And this is the same as this, only it has a screen on it here. And on the screen we have, you know, we have uh, your volume control here and a brightness control here. And this makes this something that you could plug into a cigarette lighter in a car and throw in the back with a kid or you know, something a little bit more portable. Oh, and this also has on the back here this whole thing bolts into the back of the actual unit, as you can see right here. Okay, um, it has the power, and then your AV, but then it also has an AV in. Apparently you can run something else into this. I don't know, maybe a, a computer monitor? I don't know, what AV in, but that's what it is, sure as hell. And this is a, uh, a headphone jack, so you can put on phones and listen to this in private. La. So, that's, anyway, that's the way uh, the device is laid out. Um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the games. And that's the boot up screen. Yay. Is it Galaga? No. This is the original Tekken 1. This ain't no Tekken 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, or 6, or tag, or bag, or any of that stuff. This is the original Tekken, the real deal. And we're going to have a look at some of this. Oh, do you remember this? This was awesome. This uh, went head-to-head -head with uh, Sega's um, Virtual Fighter. Only this looks a million times better. I remember the first time I put this in, when I got this system, when it came out, and I put this game in, I got this game, and I saw this. I was just blown away. I mean, by today's standards, this looks ridiculous. But when I put this in the first time, I was blown away. This generation, this 32-bit generation, in my opinion, was truly the greatest generation of all time because they made the jump. They made the jump to 3D. Let's have a look. And not too much in the way of girls in this one. I usually like to play the girls. They're more fun to watch. some Tekken. Here's a little Iron Soldier 3. The original Iron Soldier, of course, was on the Atari Jaguar, and so was the second one, I think. And I think they did a version of the second one for the new one also. But this is the third one here. They had it for the PlayStation. They had it for... I think they had this for... Uh, they might have had this for the other consoles. Well, although this came out in 2000. So, I mean, this would have been towards the end of, you know, the PlayStation 1's real, you know, relevancy here. And here it is, in all of its glory, Iron Soldier.
The music on this is really good, too. I mean, seriously, it really is. Trying to use this scanner to find... Is that him? Ah, oh, there he is. I got wasted by that guy. Iron Soldier 3. This is personally most likely my favorite game on the PlayStation. I have beaten the hell out of this so many times it's not even funny. This is Nova Storm. Cygnosis made this. Uh, a lot of people would look at this and go, oh, well, it's on a track. You know, it's uh, it's got these little 8-bit sprites. Yeah, but it's a blast. Um, it, it really is. I really dig the hell out of this game. It's like something 3DO would have done. In fact, they had this for 3DO. They had this for Sega, or, yeah, for the Sega CD also. Although for the Sega CD, it was totally different. This was the smoothest, best-looking version of this. And I love this game so much that I bought a second copy from, um, yeah, from Amazon in case... My copy ever goes bad. I think I'm going to get a couple more of them too because these things have a way of dying, you know, these these old disc games. It's kind of like uh Well, there's a lot of uh shooter games like this that that, that came available at the time for many of the uh original 32-bit systems. You blow up the ships, you grab these little wing things for power-ups. And you can actually end up with a bunch of ships around you where, you know, pretty soon you're in the middle of this glob of stuff and you kind of have to eyeball where you are. Here's a boss fight. And we got this. Ha-ha. <laughs> And the music on this is absolutely thumping. I keep trying to find a soundtrack for this someplace with no luck. Anyway, Nova Storm. That's the name of that game, Nova Storm. That's right, it says Rage Racer, not Ridge Racer. Although I am a big Ridge Racer fan, I have the Ridge Racer, the Ridge Racer Revolution, and the Rage Racer. Blech. Try to say that fast three times. Anyway... Everybody remembers Ridge Racer. Well, this is Rage Racer, a little bit more elusive. This one goes up and down a little bit more than uh, the Ridge Racer. And it has these weird looking cars. I prefer arcade style racers to racing sims. They're not as long. I don't want to. I don't want to sit down to a. Or, I, I really don't want to race. You know, 500 real-time laps. I, I. You know, I don't see the point in that. Give me something with three laps. <laughs> you know, I'm fine with three laps. I'm fine with arcade steering. graphics for this at the time. Again, this went up against uh, Sega's Daytona USA. And I think this has D Daytona USA licked. Lock, stock, and barrel.
Whoops. Anyway, it's Rage Racer. With all seriousness, you can't really be a collector unless you have a PlayStation 1 in your collection. You can't say that you collect video game systems unless you have that. I mean, even a casual collector has to have it. This is a must-have for everyone, people. Um, I'm going to do an upcoming episode sometime down the road of uh, a list of systems that you really have to have if you're going to call yourself a collector. And this one's definitely on the list. Of course, it's going to be all staple systems. But, nonetheless, uh, uh, what's important here is that the, the Sony product brand, the brand, the Sony PlayStation, uh, continued well past the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Portable, and the PlayStation Vita. The PlayStation brand is definitely, you know, for the most part, here to stay, despite the fact that recently they've lost $6 billion dollars. The PlayStation 3, of course, for the most part, for what they were trying to do with it, the PlayStation 3 really didn't meet expectations. I hesitate to say that it was a failure. I'm sure they made a little money off of it. Not much. Uh, and the future holds the PlayStation 4, and who knows what that's going to do. But uh, at the end of the day, the PlayStation 1 really set the watermark higher. Uh, it made it uh, a little bit more difficult to be number one. Uh, recently, uh, the uh, Nintendo DS beat out the PlayStation 2 for the number one selling console of all time. Um, and the PlayStation 2 had held on to that for years. Sony, you know, did their homework. And they're a very strong company with, you know, the video game industry. Uh, but gamers' tastes are changing again. Um, if you want to look at it like that, I don't think gamers' tastes ever changed. I think uh, the game industry ignored people, but that's another episode as well. Uh, but uh, for the most part, let me just go, go back and say that uh, Sony PlayStation, necessary system if you're going to collect. Awesome system. There's like a trillion games for it. You can find them anywhere. Any of the, any of the, the, the game stores, you know, retro game stores, will definitely, definitely have PlayStation 1 games hell you can still find them at yard sales so if you don't have a playstation one what's wrong with you go get one god hook it up to the tv that's in your shed if you have to but uh pick it up get one and uh we'll see you here next time